MJ and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous striped throw blanket. I've used Brava bulky weight yarn. This is 100% acrylic and it's a great affordable yarn that you can purchase from We Crochet. So in total I have picked a bunch of blue, a range of blue plus a gray shade. So the dark blue I've already worked up is called Solstice Heather. And then I've also picked Peacock and then Cornflower and Tranquil for my colors. And then the gray that I picked is Dove Heather. Now you can pick any variety, but I wanted a really cool gradual flow of color. And between every color I've worked white. So one ball of white for every white stripe in between our color. So I've used three balls of our blue color here, and then I've done a ball of white and so on. So if you go to the blog, it'll show you all of your yarn requirements that you need. And the blanket that I've made is about 60 inches by 64 inches. So you can alter that up depending on the size that you would like. But if you want to follow along with this pattern, that's the size that I've made, which is a really nice big throw blanket. And it's not too heavy, but it's nice and thick. And I've used a really cool textured stitch here that I'm going to show you how to make. The hook you're going to need to make this blanket is a nine millimeter crochet hook. So to make our blanket to be 60 inches wide, you need to chain out a total of 179. Now I'm going to show you how to begin with a color that you're going to find a little easier to see. So I'm going to show you with the Tranquil, which is a beautiful mint green color. And I'm only going to make a small swatch so I can work through the pattern with you. But now if you're following along with this, you want to chain with your white and you want to chain out 179. For my swatch, I'm just going to chain out 15. For the stitch pattern, you want to chain a multiple of 2 plus 1. So I'll chain 14 and then plus 1, 15. So our first row is quite simple. We're just going to work a single crochet in every chain across. Now we'll start out in the second chain, so we'll skip the first chain here. And then in the next chain, we'll work a single crochet. So push through the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we'll work that single crochets all the way across the chain. So you'll have a total of 14 stitches. Now if you're making the entire blanket, when you've worked across in single crochets, you'll have 178. So I've worked all the way across and it's a good idea just to start out the same as me making the swatch for your blanket just so you can check your gauge to find out if you're going to come out with a similar size. So now what we're going to do is chain two. The chain two is going to be included as a stitch throughout this pattern. Now we're working a cluster stitch and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is do a single crochet, but we're going to do it across three stitches. So I'm going to go through the stitch. I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to go through the next stitch pull up a loop and I'm going to go through the next stitch and pull up a loop. So you now have four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops and then we'll chain one. So for the next cluster, we're going to go through, pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop. We now have four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all four, and chain one. And we're repeating this all the way along. 
So always make sure you've got those four loops on the hook and you're good, pull through, chain one. So I'm gonna repeat that across. So now when we're getting to the end, you should have one stitch remaining and we're gonna work a single crochet into that final stitch. Then we're gonna chain two and turn. Okay, so now we're gonna change up our cluster just a little bit and it's just gonna make this pattern a little bit easier to work through. So I've chained two and now in that chain two space, we're gonna go through and pull up a loop. Now this is our chain here. We're gonna skip over the chain and go into the stitch that's nice and easy here to work into. We're gonna pull up another loop. So we now have three loops on the hook. We'll yarn over, pull through all three and chain one. So now in the same space here as the cluster, we're gonna go back down through and pull up a loop. We're gonna skip over the chain and we're gonna go into the next stitch that's nice and easy to work through. Yarn over and pull through all three and chain one. So if we were to keep the cluster the same, we would be working through that chain space, but this just keeps the cluster not quite as um, big and uses a little less yarn and it actually works up a little quicker. So we're just gonna modify this cluster and work it that way. Chain one and then we'll do a single crochet in that turning chain. Chain two and turn. So our first row of clusters are a little bit larger, but the rest of the clusters we're gonna work are just gonna be the smaller clusters. So I'll just show you again with this row, we'll go through that first stitch, pulling up a loop. Skip the chain. Okay, so once you have a total of six rows completed, we're gonna change the color. So now if you're following along with my striping for the blanket, this first section will be white. It's just easier to see with this color and that's why I've chosen different colors to show you. So six rows should get you through your first ball of yarn. So if you have run short on your first ball, then you probably your tension is maybe a little bit different than mine and you might need to drop your hook size because you don't want to go over using one ball for this section because each section between our blocks of color will be six rows and for the pattern I just have one ball of white yarn for each of those sections. So now when you're going to change the color we need to pull back this last stitch. So work that final single crochet in the turning chain. Instead of yarning over, we're gonna yarn over it with our new color. So if you're following along with my color choices, we would be bringing in Solstice Heather at this point, the dark blue. But I'm just gonna show you with gray because it's easier to see. So pull that through. So we'll chain two and turn. And now we're working into that first stitch. Pull up a loop, we're skipping over the chain and going into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three and chain one. Working in the same stitch as the cluster we just made, we're going through pulling up a loop, skipping over the chain one, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. When we get to the end, again, we're just doing 
one single crochet in the turning chain, chain two, and turn. You'll see we'll have a line going across here. This is the wrong side, and we're just continuing now with our modified cluster and chain one all the way across. So now what I want you to do, I have three balls of color for each of the color sections and it's going to work out to about 18 rows. If you can squeeze in a couple more rows and you can do 20, that's great. I would just use up the yarn that you have. I did about 20 rows with my Solstice Heather. I ended up having enough between the little bits of extra on each of the balls of yarn to add in another two rows. But if you can only get 18, you want to end with even numbers so that when we change color, we're working an odd numbered row so we're back on the right side. So every time you change color, we want to be on the right side of our work. A row one is the right side, so every odd number row is a right side. That's why we do even number sections. So at the eight row mark, we're looking at about four inches. So if you're wanting to compare your gauge for this pattern, about eight rows in four inches and one, two, three, four, five cluster stitches. So for every cluster, you're looking at about two stitches. So two, four, six, eight, ten about 10 stitches or five clusters. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to weave in your end. So here is a white. I'm gonna take my yarn needle for bulky yarn And get that pushed through and what you want to make sure is that when you're weaving this you're going through all the white you don't want to go through any of the blue section because we don't want to see any of the yarn so I'm just gonna bring the yarn down just a little bit just to keep it away from that join you want to find a nice thick kind of area to go through so that we're really hiding you always want to weave back in the opposite direction never just weave one way you want to weave this way and then we want to go back and always make sure you pull that you haven't distorted your blanket in any way. And you can go back and then you can even take it back a little bit more. Like I still have some yarn left, so why not make sure that's really secure. You want it to last wash after wash. So weaving those ends is always a great idea. So once you're finished, then you can just trim that end. And it's not too bad. We won't have too many ends to weave, but every color change you will have the two colors, your white and your blue and as you go. And you can mix and match your color patterns how you want. I've just chosen sort of a gradual change here, a dark blue to a medium blue to a lighter blue, and then just to the mint, which I thought was really nice. And I added a gray in as well, just to kind of neutralize it and add an extra color so I could get a bit more length to the blanket. 